good afternoon i am mr ish thank you for joining me for this video where we are doing the series expansion for the arc tan or the inverse tan it's slightly complex procedure but it's not overly exaggerated in terms of difficulty because recently we've looked at that binomial theorem expansion series video where we know the binomial series is the taylor series we utilize that to our advantage this is my function arc tan its derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared you know that if you rewrite that without the denominator, this is what we're looking at. If you know you're looking at that, and we are looking here at series expansion, we will be utilizing the Maclaurin series A equals zero. To start this out, you can do a very quick step right away and save the value. You know your zero order derivative here is equal to your original function, which is equal to the inverse tan. And you know when you're doing A equals zero Maclaurin series, you put zero into that original function or into any of the derivatives, and what value you get is the value which retains in terms of the value which you'll feed into your series well the inverse tan of zero is a zero so when i'm doing that i'm going to remember that this right here is zero it will start everything out in terms of the series that item has to be placed and put aside for now it will come into play later on you're looking at this what we can do is expand this out because it will be beneficial one to the power of n and i've shown you all of this in that previous video the tag of which i'll include with this because I showed you many tricks and techniques in that video which will be seen over here or I will breeze through them over here. The next item is this. These are your combinatorial coefficients. n minus 1, then x to the 1, and then I'll have n2, 1 to the power of n minus 2, and x squared, and then I'll have n3, and then 1 to the power of n minus 3, and x cubed. I won't write anymore because I've shown you this in that video. When you simplify all of this, you know you're getting basically just a 1. When you simplify all of this, you're getting an nx. I, I will show you just one simplification, then the rest will be assumed because I've shown you that in that video. These items over here are equal to n factorial or 1 factorial, n minus 1 factorial based on what you have. This right here is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. All of which you get from here is an n, which hits with that, you get your nx. Again, I urge everyone to look at that previous video because I've shown you how you iron down through all of these by means of the shortcuts involving all of the factorial procedures that come into play. From that, I will get n times n minus 1 times x squared divided by 2 factorial. Here I would have had 1 factorial, 0 factorial, but they're meaningless. Then the next item would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times x cubed over 3 factorial 6 and the last item I'm putting n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times x to the 4 over 4 factorial 24. What do I do with this? Let's remove these and clean this out. And this will be just a 2. So the question still stands. This right here represents the function in terms of how it's expanding using the binomial series. But how do I tie all of this with this function? We have the inverse tan. How do I tie them? I'll show you how. You have this representation of a binomial. And I've shown you that this is a binomial, or I've told you it's a binomial. It's similar to that. Look at the anatomy of this and anatomy of that and plug the things out. I have a 1 plus x to the power of n. I have 1 plus x to the power of n, except their n is equal to minus 1, and their x is equal to x squared. Wherever I have an n and an x, I'll plug in these values. Wherever you see an n, you put a minus 1. Wherever you see an x, you put an x squared and you work it out. Here I have an 1, it'll carry through. Here I have a minus 1 times x squared. Here I have um, n minus 1 times n minus 1, which is a minus 2, times x squared squared is an x to the 4 over 2. Here I have a minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 times x squared cube is an x to the 6 over 6, plus minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4, x to the square 4 is an x to the 8 over 24. Simplify this to give you your first order derivative. You can see it's slightly more complex. You would have a 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4, these things cancel out. This thing cancels out, but brings out a minus x to the 6. All of this cancels out with the 24, you'll have a plus x to the 8 onwards. This right here represents your first order derivative. Now the second order derivative is easy, it's just the derivative of this. It's a 0 minus 2x plus 4x cubed minus 6x to the 5 plus 8x to the 7 onward. The third order derivative is just the derivative of this. 0 minus 2 plus 12 x squared minus 30 x to the 4. We don't need to write anymore because most of these terms will zero out when you look them with that. We'll do one more, the fourth order derivative. The fourth order derivative will be this. Derivative of this is a 0. Derivative of this is a 0. The derivative of this is a 24 x 
and I won't write anymore because everything will zero out anyways. Now that I've determined all of this, what do I do with this? You have to put in your A value of zero and see what happens. And I'm gonna start expanding and putting the preliminary series items for you right over here. Everything that I'm doing over here with all of this and with the shared value from the beginning is only working me through this part right here. F to the N and the zero coming in. It's only working me and providing me with this. I still have to do N factorial and X to the N, but that's easy. Let's just work on this box component. The first item is a zero. Now we put in each of these derivatives from the first, second, third, and the fourth. We'll stop at the fourth zeros in places of X. I'm getting a one over here. Everything else will zero out. I'll just get a one. In this second order derivative, I'll put zeros into everything. Everything will zero out. I'm getting a plus a zero. In the third order derivative, I'm putting zero because the A value feeds in. You know, the A value feeds into your derivatives, your higher order derivatives. Everything zeroes out except for this term. I'm getting a minus two. Here, everything will zero out. Everything will literally zero out. I'm getting a plus zero. If you want to, you can add a fifth term and I will. You will just do the derivative of this. I'm getting a zero minus zero plus 24 and then onwards. If I were to put a zero into this, I'm gonna get a plus 24. Now, the most difficult and challenging work of this entire series expansion has been done dealing with the binomial theorem expansion dealing with all of these boxed components this right is my box component it was rather tricky the easy part is this right over here the combination of these with that you'll have zero x to the power of zero over zero factorial plus one x to the one over one factorial plus zero x squared over two factorial minus two x cubed over three factorial plus zero x to the four over four factorial plus 24 x to the five over five factorial on and on get rid of all of these meaningless terms which are these zeros and what do you get left with your first item is x your next item is 2x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 2x cubed over 6 is a minus x cubed over 3. Then you have this, 24x to the 5 over 5 factorial, which is 120, which is a 5 really. 120 divided by 24 is a 5, you get plus x to the 5 over 5, and now you extrapolate the rest. You know the next one will be x to the 7 over 7, then it'll be x to the 9 over 9, then it'll be x to the 11 over 11, and then onwards and your series has been expanded. All of this will equal to your R10 series. And what does this represent in terms of the components you're seeing? This represents your Maclaurin series, your 11th polynomial for the R10, going up to n equals 11. It has alternating positive negative terms. Everything here is an odd number. You can write out a power series representation here if you want. I have cleaned out the board over here for the R10 expansion. The series looks like this. We know that this right here is your Maclaurin series polynomial and it looks like this and you can keep going on and on. But in terms of a power series, you know very well a good pattern develops here. You're looking here always from n equals zero. Well, for this case, n equals zero up to infinity, you have alternating positive negative terms starting with this. We'll put minus one to the power of n because if n is zero, this will become a positive first term. You have x to the power of 2n plus 1. Remember, I've shown you 2n plus 1 is a good way to get odd numbers. 2n plus 1 here is in the denominator. You'll get your 1, 3, 5, 7 this way. And this right here will represent your power series template. You can just check for the two terms. How about if n were equal to 0, you're looking here at minus 1 to the power of 0. You're, you have x to the power of 1 divided by 1. And this will give you here a x. If you have n is equal to, well, let's put another number. Let's say if n is equal to 3, what do we get? We have minus 1 to the power of 3. We'll have x times 2 times 3 is a 6. 6 plus 1 is a 7 divided by 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is a 7. You'll have here a minus x to the 7 over 7. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, fourth term. 1, 2, 3, fourth term. And that's exactly what I have minus x to the 7 or 7. So we now know and confirm that this is a good power series, which brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.